it's a good time for us to start with our woman of the month. Our woman of the month is a remarkable mix of joy and ash, a fierce determination to excel amidst the odds of life. She's Professor Joyce Ashu Tang Tang, an author, a scholar, an actress. She is our woman of the month. So throughout this month of March, we're going to be having segments where we converse with her. She's not here. She's going to be connecting live from the United States of America. She will share aspects of her life that could motivate and inspire the Cameroonian woman of today. Uh, Professor Joyce Ashu Tang Tang, also known as Joyce Ash, is a graduate of over three universities in three continents, including the University of Yaoundé One. She's got a wide range of creative publications, including 2018's Beautiful Fire, recently uh, transformed to Arabic, translated into Arabic. She's been distinguished in numerous ways, including the Rybikov Prize for Excellence in Teaching and Scholarship. See, I can go on and on about her prowess, but we'll be doing that throughout the month of March. This first exchange, we'll talk about her value system, her parentage, and her secret to excellence. And it's with great joy that we say good morning to you, Professor Joyce Ashu Tang Tang. And our first question would be to understand a little bit of your ultimate inspiration coming from your parents in particular. Good morning to you. Oh my, thank you for that glowing introduction. Wow, I love your choice of words, a mixture of joy and ash. In fact, that's the texture of life. That's the texture of life. <laughs> so let me start with your first question. My parents, I was blessed as a young girl to have the kind of parents that I had. My father on one hand was the epitome of integrity. And that is something that I got from him. I love integrity. I like people whose words mean what they say. And that is the way I am. And integrity is tied to truth. I'm also a truth seeker. I love truth. And it does not matter to me if truth takes long to present itself or creates a lonely space. I love truth. My mother, on the other hand, was the queen of the sixth sense. She had emotional intelligence. She, she, if she was a poem, she would be free verse. For an African woman, she was a passepartout. We had good evenings. She would take her money. She was the first feminist I knew without even using the word uh, a feminist. No, she, she was proud of herself, was happy that she was working. She would take uh, 500 francs, put on the table. I walked money and send somebody to go bring top and some little soya and puff puff. And we would play music. We had parties every evening. At that time, there was no television. So between my father and my mother, I was brought up with balance. So you can see me one minute, I am doing some academic work. Next minute, I'm booging down <laughs> to Balate, to the floor. So yes, from my parents, I was blessed with balance, you know, as a human being. And you know what's interesting about your family as well is that you had more sisters as siblings. How did you support each other? Because during this period, we're also talking about women supporting one another. Yes, my siblings have been my role models. I was fortunate to have three sisters in front of me and one behind me. So the three sisters in front of me beat a path for me. I did not have to stray. Academically, they set the records and I just had to follow. My first sister, Dr. Uh, Mrs. Martha Zama Ne Ashuntantang, my second sister, uh, Dr. Gloria Ashuntantang Some. And my third sister in front of me, the one who passed, uh, Emilia, they were stars in their own rights. 
there were stars and I I was lucky you know whether it's lipstick whether it's wearing makeup my first sister <laughs> showed me how to do that and at the same time acing her exams so I knew that you could be a woman and enjoy presenting as a woman doing things and still pass your exams so I didn't grow up in a way where in order to be a good student you had to be nerdy and don't um, don't make up don't enhance your womanhood they were role models in front of me that they made me know that I could be a woman and also do well You know, the thing that's also difficult that we have to address is, although it's rosy, womanhood is strength and all that, but so many women are faced with loss these days, and that puts them in a pit that they don't know how to lift themselves out of. In your case, you lost your parents and even your sister before you turned the age 20. How did you survive that and still emerge to the person you are today? The story of our lives yes that was tragic and I've heard that a lot I I wish I could explain it why it did not paralyze me maybe because of the upbringing I had received in order to uh, I learned how to analyze things critically logically I also had faith in God but I I think that what motivated me most was the fact that I felt bad that my parents left early. I felt that they did not leave to enjoy the fruits of their labor. So I wanted them to live forever. And the only way I could see that happening is if I do well. If I do well and I can carry their name, then they would live forever. And that is what motivated me. And I came to the University of Yaoundé. I had just lost my parents, you know, and I came there with that, with that energy, with that hunger to, to make their name alive, to make their names relevant. And I have continued to do that. Each time I travel the world, when I go to Nicaragua and I have to present, you know, I'm like, oh my God, I have brought the family name here. I don't just come to represent my country, but I'm also bringing my family name and that energizes me even more. Same with the death of my sister. Uh, Amelia was my immediate role model. I wanted to do what she was doing. She was a star in a Sunday school place and I grew up doing that also. And when she died, I just continued with the acting. You know, I, I continued doing the same things that she was uh, doing. Before she died, she was a storytelling champion for Southwest. At 13, at 13, she beat adults. So I, and I, so I just wanted Amelia to live forever. And that is what energizes me. And I think that is the same thing that I have told some friends who have loved their parents. I said, the only thing you can do for your loved ones is that you are lucky to be alive. Live for them. Do things that the people will remember them. You know, so my one of the things that I, I love to hear is when I do some things like, oh, are you related to Mr. George uh, Ashun Tantang and the wife Catherine who died? Yes, 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 I am. I'm their daughter. I love that. So beautiful. Thank you for that word of encouragement because in the bliss of celebration, we have to think of women who are on a dark side and are seeking for ways to emerge. Professor Joyce Ashutang Tang, stay with us. We're going to have a break. I'm sure you're going to enjoy what you're going to see right now because it's time for us to have the Rainbow Interactive Association exhibit the beauty of womanhood. The first one is a play and it's going to be performed by Jem Leslie and Forchi Emmanuel. Men talking about women, bliss. I think I should tell. Um... Okay. Ah. Ah, the moon. Uh, you, you almost missed me. Oh, really? Yes. Then I must be lucky. Yes, you are, you are. I was just about uh, stepping out. So where are you heading to at uh, this time of the day? 
Uh, yes. I once told you I needed to operate the business for my wife, right? Business? Oh, yes, definitely. Did I hear you well for oh, your yeah. wife? Yes. For my wife. Do you want to destroy your marriage? <laughs> and how is getting a business for my wife going to destroy my marriage, if I may ask? See, we have been friends for a long time. And I cannot see you falling into a pit without coming to your rescue. Look, let me tell you something. When she starts touching money, her mind will start dancing. No kaki pa, no kaki pa. Enough, Mo enough, 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 enough of that. You are very, very wrong. Wrong, you say? That's reasoning of the old. Things have changed. And we should no more be living in the dark. Get that. Maybe you have money to waste. And by the way, do you want to incur the wrath of our forefathers? Uh -huh. A woman's place is in the kitchen. Not in business. Uh, Waki, my friend, <laughs> listen. Our uh, forefathers, they lived in the dark ages with no enlightenment. It is because of men like you that our women undergo a lot of torture and stress. You encourage vi uh, vices like uh, gender inequality, a lack of access to education, mm. and violence on the woman folk. Can't you get that? Whatever you say has nothing to do with me. I respect the legacy of our forefathers. And a woman's place is in the kitchen. A woman's place is in a farm. And most importantly, she is the child-bearing machine. <laughs> what business? Ah, with that, I say no. A big no to that. On the contrary, women are essential contributors to what economic development. They contribute immensely to the growth and development of businesses. Listen, empowering women is crucial to creating a just and stable society. When women are empowered, they are more likely to take to leadership rules. And thereby what? Contributing to decision-making processes that what? will impact their lives and that of those around them. My friend, let me tell you, empowering women lead to improved health outcomes. It also increase, uh, increase what? Economic growth. And not only that, but also they help in eradicating the rate of poverty in our society. My friend, think about that. You are right. You are correct. Better start a, a, a reasoning in what? In a development-oriented manner. In fact, you have helped me today. <laughs> I will have to set up a very lucrative business for my wife. Uh, I mean, the mother of my children. Mm. I need to invest in her. I need her to be up there. In fact, thank you very much, my brother. That's the spirit. That's the spirit. You know, there is a collective effort. Let's put our hand together in order to improve on the status of our women. Thank you very okay. much. In fact, you have clarified my doubts. Oh, Benson. Thank, thank you. Benson. What are friends God for? bless you. In bless fact, you. I, you do know something. I need to start rushing. Okay, then. Let me see you off. Thank you. She for she, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for us to hear from a woman herself. She's Raisa, power of the woman. A powerful woman. She walks on her path with her head raised up. She's connected to God. It's her time to fly. She's on a mission to accomplish her mission. And nothing can stop her, for that is her decision. With her heart on fire and her mind of gold, she accomplishes the impossible. She changes the world. A woman of courage, a woman of strength, a woman of faith and devotion, a mother of children. What will become of men if there were no women? No more noises at the bus, no one to start the troubles. What will become of men if there were no women? Who would teach them to learn and live? A traveler between life and death, in an effort to bring life, endowed with foresight, endurance, strength, and skill. 
Your laughter wipes the tears of older men. It infects them with a happy infection. And they laugh as though they were newborn. <laughs> Soft and tender, with a fragrance of love and warmth, a symbol of beauty. You can be anything, have anything, become anything, for you are a perfect being. A poem written and directed by We See Bennett and presented by Bongadu Raisa. Thank you. Thank you so much. Eric, you're not clever. Huh? Thank you. Okay, in a moment, we'll have a lovely conversation with Precious Ashuganya, but let's wrap up our chat with our guest who is linking with us from the United States of America. She is Professor Joyce Ashu Tang Tang. She's a woman, our woman of the month, an author, scholar, and actress distinguished around the world. So, Professor, I hope you're still with us, and I'd like to get your take on the best way we can spend the International Women's Day, according to you. Yes, yes, I'm still here with you, my dear. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still here. Well, the best way to observe the International Day, there are many ways. One of the best is celebrating a woman that you admire, a woman that has been a role model, a woman that has opened a path for others. Celebrate her, you know, if you are on Facebook or TikTok or what, celebrate her. Let the world know her. That is one way. Another way, especially for women, is to share stories. Share your stories. You know, one of the things about womanhood is that our voice has been under attack because women are not allowed to talk. Remember when they said uh, a child is to be what? Is not to be not to be heard you know and it's the same thing for women you know you, you you're not supposed to to talk and so because of that a, a lot of women the wisdom that they have from their lived experiences we don't get to we, we, we don't get to hear them we don't get to to enjoy that wisdom and one of the reasons is because a lot of women's experiences are in the domestic sphere that is not privileged as a source of wisdom as a source of knowledge meanwhile that is a space that raises a child that is the, the the space that supports a home so there's a lot there so sharing stories women sharing stories during this time is another uh, activity that can benefit other women and i think that's what we are doing here where i'm sharing my story you know through your questions, I am bringing parts of my story. And of course, you can also read books by women, uh, uh, women writers. And it's you, when you share stories, let me come back to the stories. When you share stories, it's not stories of particular women. Every woman has a story. Every woman has a story worth sharing. And every woman's story captures wisdom wisdom that would be good for some aspect of living okay we we cannot end this conversation without you talking about your award-winning book beautiful fire a collection of poems divided into three segments one of which is titled called me a woman i want to know what aspects of womanhood you read or you race in those books especially that book in particular, not the different books, the book Beautiful Fire, what aspects of womanhood you raised in that book that can inspire the woman watching us to this morning? Yes. Uh, you know something? <laughs> Thank you so much. In terms of Beautiful Fire, I think I should just share two or three poems so that uh, you can get a sense or the audience can get a sense. Let me look at uh, this one. Something remained for pregnant women 
who die from abuse and those living with the scars. I want to write a poem in anger, but I'm no poet, only a woman with a womb, a witness to my sister's pain. Her dying sounds finding my Billy God ear, not for me, not for me. Leave me to breathe life in this sacred shrine. But blood stains opened a path for her. Her womb ran on legs of faith. Violent steps encircled her light. Other body parts struggled for life. And death gathered them all in its hands. Except her womb slippery with life. She's gone now. But her bloody stains scream on the sleeves of your shirt. They cry in the armpits of your public face and flowers of her agony sprout in your sleep. No one wrestles with a god and wins. Every woman with a womb is a god. And I'll do this one. It's called A Divine Bond. For Brandy, surrogate mom on Mother's Day 2017. So we have now come to a place where our sisters who are not able to carry a baby on their own can get a surrogate to do it for them. And by celebrating the surrogate mother, I am saying that it is another valid way to motherhood. So this one is for Brandy, surrogate mother, who carried a baby for one of our Cameroonian sisters. You would never know all of us from Italy to Cameroon the world over. You may never hear the noise of our joy busting the plastic of helpless forms. You may never see the twinkle in our eyes as we gush at the miracle you carried, the halo of your sublime gift. Circles our hearts and minds. Today we bring our basket of thanks for you, our mother angel. Just a little token for our spring blossom. Nothing will ever match your selfless grace. Tomorrow, we will still exclaim and always remember your name, Brandy. How else are we to respond? Your womb is our divine bond. Well, I hope I'll continue reading from this uh, volume and my other uh, volumes in the course of this uh, celebration. <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor Joyce Ashutang Tang. This conversation must continue, and I promise we will continue the conversation next week because you are our Woman of the Month. Thank you so much for spending this morning with us. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. This has been a pleasure, and uh, I look forward to the next segment next week. I don't know what the questions would be. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Wow, that's uh, Professor Joyce Ashutang Tang, a woman of uh, dignity and achievements. So much to talk about next week. Don't miss it.